Today we're going to a place called East Newcastle and this is in Herefordshire and um, it's called East Newcastle but it's actually um, a stately home built in the style of a castle and uh, this was built at the start of the 1800s and at least one of the rooms was designed by uh, Augustus Pugin um, so this should be pretty interesting so uh, yeah, let's have a look and the castle first comes into view Just before we get to the house. And here's the house in front of us. This is actually really impressive um, in style and in size. This was built um, from 1810 to 1824. And this was built for John Cox, first Earl Summers, and the architect was Robert Smirk, who was also responsible for uh, other buildings such as the British Museum. This building is Grade 1 listed, and in 1849 to 1850, uh, Pugin came and did some work on at least one of the rooms here. Namely the uh, gothic drawing room, I believe. And there's a massive uh, port cashier there. Where people uh, could have arrived in there horse and carriages, or later on cars, and they would have parked under there, so uh, to be sheltered from rain and whatnot. We'll have a little uh, look through the port cashier. Yeah. This opens. And so this is uh, around the side of the building. A bit of a terrace area. If you look down to the left, you see there's a lake down there. There's actually an obelisk in the uh, far distance. one of the four corner towers. And then we round to the rear of the house. There's a lovely terrace at the back here. If we walk to uh, the end of the terrace, you can see the lake behind the house and a further terrace just below. And shortly, I'm going to be going round to the front because I'm going to go in the house and hopefully they're going to let me film inside. Bit of a taxidermy on the table. Right?
Wow, this looks like a good collection of armor. Yes. It's wearing a complete suit of North Italian equestrian field armor, dating from 
Yeah, so this is actually called the Lung Library. And uh, the main tapestries from around the room, uh, those were from Italy. And this room apparently holds uh, 5,000 books. Looks like some little kind of children's playroom or something. Quite a plain room compared to uh, some of the others we've just seen. This would be the staircase wall, I suppose. And we'll go upstairs in a second. Quite an impressive staircase. Even the radiators have got some kind of design on them. Okay, let's go upstairs. It's a lovely sweeping staircase. And we're upstairs. You can actually um, book this place out for weddings and hospitality and such like, so I believe you can sleep in um, many of the bedrooms in here.
fancy old toilet there. Huh? Nice full poster bed there. This looks like some uh, small family chapel. This is on the same level as uh, the bedrooms that we've just seen. Go back downstairs. Okay, so there's a bedroom downstairs. This is the state bedroom. The bed frame is 17th century Italian walnut. Yeah, so these are obviously the state apartments. This would have been the old suite next to the state bedroom. Right, so that was inside the house. And um, I really enjoyed seeing the drawing room by Pugin. So yeah, that was uh, pretty good. I think I'm going to head down to the uh, lake behind the house now and see what's down in the grounds. Nice places to sit down and have a picnic or whatever. Lots of stuff for kids to do here, by the way.
This is an interesting uh, fountain just below the terrace. Not sure of any details about it really, but it's quite nice. Some sort of building up here, just off the uh, side of the lake. Just gonna have a walk up here and have a look. See what it is. It's probably some sort of little uh, summer house or something. Ah, yeah. It's the ice house. Interesting. Right? Yeah, so with ice houses like this, what would happen is in the winter, they go down and uh, cut big chunks of ice off the lake, and then they bring them up to the ice house. Yeah, and it's too dark to actually see down into the uh, where they drop the ice. But basically, in the big chamber at the end, they would drop the ice down there and um, get it compacted and stuff. And then in the summer they'd still have ice to uh, cool the food and make ice cream and stuff like that. So yeah, these ice houses are pretty handy. The gardens and parkland here are uh, grade 2 listed. All the sandwiches come now mate. Nice view of the house from the uh, end of the lake. The end of the lake, there's a, a weir and bridge. Yeah. This is pretty stunning. The bridge out. Let's carry on uh, back around the lake. For the first six years of the construction of the house, um, 250 men worked day and night to build it. The four main towers that you can see on the corners of the house were uh, damaged in hurricane force winds in 1976, so have uh, been repaired since. And apparently there are 97 rooms in total in the house. So, you know, it's a pretty big place. The house has been used as a set location for various TV programmes and films. One of these was the BBC adaptation of Little Lord Fauntleroy in 1995. Another one was the 1986 film version of Oscar Wilde's The Canterville Ghost. And there was also a 2006 version of Dracula filmed here. Still on the side terrace, you can uh, see where the servants quarters would have been down there. There's also a bit of an arboretum here, with uh, 
a lot of different species of trees. Not far from the entrance there's a maze. And I'm not going to get lost in here. Yeah, so that's Eastner Castle. And as you've seen, there's some uh, really nice things to see here. And something to add is um, there's lots for children to do here. I haven't actually filmed any of it, but uh, there's quite a lot of provision for children if you bring them along. And also, um, strangely, it's the first place I've been to that does this. But um, you're allowed to actually take your dog inside the house as well. So, you know, it's very accessible. So, yeah, thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it as usual. And I'll uh, see you next time. Thanks.